Why am I showing you this grocery bag? Well, because it says thank you. And I do want to say thank you for watching my channel and for everybody leaving such nice comments lately. But I have another reason. This is a grocery bag. This is from our local store. I went to a garage sale last weekend and I picked up a few items, some things, some couple puzzles, some planters, some little scissors and some magazines, just things like that. And I was ready to go home. But then I passed this sign that said, book sale, one block. <laughs> so I turned around. <laughs> and what it was, was a church was having a book sale. I believe it was a Lutheran church. I had no idea that it was going to happen, but I thought, oh, I love book sales. So I turned around and doubled back and went to it. And it turns out that, yes, you could fill a grocery sack this is a large one, too, for $5. You could also fill a box for $10. Well, I opted for the grocery sack, but look what I got. Oh, my goodness, look what I got. And I tell you, there are some fabulous things in here that I want to show you. But I got some playing cards, some double deck of cards with a paisley print. Those will be fun for altered art. And another deck of cards here with, it looks like a barn scene on them. By the way, I asked, since these were price tags, do I have to pay this for them? She said, no, just throw them in the bag. So I did. So I got some books that we're all familiar with. All I need to know, I learned in kindergarten. That's going to be fun reading. I could go back to kindergarten. Science book here. Some of these things will be fun for altered art. I can already visualize what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to set these aside. I got a hymnal. I thought it would be fun to do some art in this hymnal. Some Bible art journaling. I'll come back to this one. Look at this college typewriting book. And it opens from the top. Do you remember these? All these typing exercises? And what I don't journal with, I can tear out and use as collage paper. That might even be fun in blue books. Fun books. We didn't think so back then. This is, I actually have this book in storage. I had purchased this same book years ago. Poems by Henry David Thoreau, America the Beautiful. But I saw it there, and I thought, well, I'm going to get it again because I'm liking these larger format books for altered books. And I'm even liking the idea that I can work with them in horizontal format instead of vertical format. So I picked that one up. The treasure chest. This is filled with quotes and sayings, um, little bits and pieces of the... Of, good willed advice <laughs> so this will be fun to use as journaling spots and look we can even make a an art journal out of it how fun is that another children's book here that's already in <laughs> torn up so that you don't feel bad using it you could tear into this finish the job that someone else started <laughs> some kid I saw a Crayola mark in here here look isn't that fun? Some youngster was having fun with their box of crayons. I'll finish that for them. I got a Joyce Meyer book. And I'm sharing this one because I actually did start reading this. This is an interesting book, Eat the Cookie and Buy the Shoes. And it's talking about not feeling guilty. Not feeling guilty when you go to... A library sale and spend five dollars on a bag of books <laughs> when you really didn't intend to. I have been enjoying this book. It's easy reading. Of course they all sell. I also got a stack of magazines. Some of these magazines came from the garage sale and some of them came from the book sale. But it was all on the same day. Images 
Yay! Images. Gina Aarons and Cindy Sines Hutter have gotten me on this blue book phase. I have been in search of images. And I really like this one because it's funny photographs from the pages of Life magazine. Oh, the little kids in the flower pots. This is more of a local, one of our small towns here in Nebraska. Looks like they had a centennial. 1883, 1958. 1958, though, that was not recent. I got this Life magazine. I'm holding my hand over the address. The label was not torn off. This is the collector's edition. Life magazine, the best magazine photography of the year. So you know that there are going to be a lot of fun images in here. Ooh, look at that. That will be fun to work with. Life Remembers 92. Another Life magazine. These will be fun for blue book material. You can see I've already started cutting out these all these images I'm saving for my blue books I have gotten them out of look at these fun Cindy you're getting me addicted these have come out of the Smithsonian magazines I really do like these Smithsonian magazines American Way Big Bend then I have a couple of other books here. It has poetry, quotes, just things. I'll never run out of, of journaling spots to put in my art journals. Same thing with this one. I've been looking for a book where I can do what they call reverse collage. Look at this. It's postcards. How fun are these? These will make nice blue book images music but I was thinking this one and I and but I got it home and looked at it and now I know I don't want to do it but I'm looking for a book that I can do reverse collage on and I saw the video on Rosemary Morris's channel and I think she got her idea from Dee Dee Willingham where you see a page like this and you paint out what you don't want and you keep the image that you want and then you do art journaling around it. It's called reverse collage. I really want to do something like that. But I haven't found the right book yet. And then there's just more images here that I'm getting ready to fussy cut for my glue book project. Tough times, strong women. I mean, I've got all these books for five dollars. Whoa! What fun is that? Now, what I really want to show you. Ooh, now, what I really want to show you here. Look at this. This was in the the bag of books. It's a book of poetry by Emerson, and you can tell the book is the book is literally falling apart. But that's what us art journal folks go for. Don't tell them. And I wanted to show you, I was looking, and if you look inside here, look, whoever covered this book, the company that covered this book, they didn't want you to know. But they used text paper on the side of it. There is text in there. Look at that. Felt, and then just cardboard. And I go, well, does front cover have it? And so I peeked. And it does. Look. How interesting is that? Huh. And then I am going to disassemble this book. And you'll be seeing me use some of the poetry out of here in a project that I'm working on. In fact, I'm working on it now. I hope to have the video up in the next few days. But this was a fun purchase. I just tucked it in the $5 bag. This book is so fragile. 
that they put it in a bag to keep it from falling apart. <laughs> and I knew, I knew right away, I didn't even open the bag. I said, give it to me, I'll take it home, I'll give it a good home. Didn't even open it up. Well, I got it home, and I figured it was probably a Bible, and it is. I mean, but look at the handwriting. <gasps> oh, look at the handwriting documenting. Now this goes back to, this particular page goes back to 1944, and look at that. Oh, doesn't this, and it, it, it's in German, and I will say that since this book is, is partial, falling apart, it probably does not have a value to it. If it had a value, it would not be at a library sale. So this is something that, yes, but I will not destroy the genealogy here. I will probably put it into some sort of a, a document to where you know, I can have like the front and back covers and then the handwriting. Look at, and this goes back to 1929 and then it just has documenting a Martin's family. How cool is that? And it's in German. So, and then I probably will use the text in my art journaling. I love the coloring spots in here. So, I think that was a score. And, let me set this aside. I have another one. Same thing. Now, this one, obvious again, too, these books do not have a value to a book collector, because it has been taped here at the side. But you know that it was a loved book. Look at more documentation. And this one goes back to, there's a hole right there. But I think that's 1858. Documenting. Wouldn't you be able, wouldn't you love to be able to trace your genealogy back? Find that something like this in your own family? I will not destroy this. This is too too much of a find to destroy. I was looking at it, and since this entire section here seems to be in the same handwriting, and the earliest date here is 1902, so I'm thinking that in 1902, which is, by the way, over 100 years ago, the person documented this entire series. I, I don't see how somebody in 1858 or 1864, which by the way, 1858 was prior to the Civil War. I don't think that they could have documented somebody in 1902 unless they would have had some magical foresight. <laughs> and again, it's in German. And there are some pieces in here. Mother Mine, that's just a that would be fun for a glue book, wouldn't it? It's already aged. There's a religious piece here with more family documentation. This looks like it belongs in the other book. I'll bet it does. So it looks like it's a different family. This looks like it came from the other book. How cool is that? And it's also German, so it would make sense to me that these two went together. Let's see if there's anything in the back. My mother's hands. How cool. Just how cool it is. I got all of that for $5. I was a happy camper when I went home. I, You know, just getting even these two for $5 was a value. I got everything else. <laughs> now what I wanted to show you is something that I found upstairs in my brother's house. Look at this box. I asked permission. Can I have this? Yes, what's inside? Money. <laughs> There's no money in there. But what's inside? Look at, looky, looky. Thread work. Needlework embroidery patterns. Oh, a whole stack of them. Yay! And this goes on and on and on. And then there's the Mary B. Art. 
Mary, Mary, Mary art. That's why this came to me. It came from New York. I do not see a date on the package. But look at these images. This is like a little envelope sack. You all, of course, what's inside? More. More. <laughs> look at this. Fun, 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 fun things. If you like this type of art and this type of embroidery, which I do. But what do I want to do with this box? This is going to be the start of a new project. I'm just going to kind of introduce it here because I'm going to be working on it. I'm going to remove these things for now. I'll put them back in. I think these started out as stationary boxes in their time. This one, obviously, again, I do not feel guilty about repurposing this because it already has a contact paper mending here on the spine. So it really, for a collector's value, probably does not have much value because if it were in pristine condition, I would not touch it. But this, it has been altered already. <laughs> But what I'm going to do with it is, on my keepings video that I put up, well, in fact, it went live today, there was a question. How can I preserve my mother's scissors and thimble? She was a seamstress, and I want to make a journal, but I can't put the scissors inside of the journal. Well, it didn't take me long to, hmm, think about this box. What I'm thinking is, I'm just going to use these spoons as pretend they're scissors <laughs> as something to put in this box to say that you wanted to say they belong to your grandmother your your great 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 aunt you could do some sort of a display in here you could put them in a group like this put scissors there I would not glue them down. I would not glue down my mother's scissors either. I would devise a way with a piece of cardboard to and maybe ribbon around it and going through the cardboard we'll see as i get more into it a way to attach these things without destroying them but use this as a shadow box then i'm going to actually remove this cover it's been attached with contact paper anyway what i'm going to do i'm going to use this as an example it's a little bit too short for this particular box. It's about, it's about an inch too short. But I'm going to get some strong cardboard and make a lid for it. And then on the top, on this, instead of opening like this, it's going to open like this. And I will construct an art journal book to open it up so you could have like an album style mine will be an art journal but say the person who posted has examples of her mother's work maybe photographs maybe some snips of material you know maybe some notes that her mother left she could do that and then fill in the pages of her journal here and mine will not have her sewing theme but I'll construct an art journal here to where you can open it up. It'll have a spine here, an additional spine, and then you can open it up further and have the shadow box effect where you can document in your journal everything that's in here. So that is a project that I'm going to be working on. I'm just kind of introducing it here because this is nothing that I can do in a night. This is just an idea, and maybe my idea will change if you're watching this video and you have comments or something to add to this that you think would be nice. I, I will probably have some type of a closure. I'd like to have a double closure, and I'm thinking that if I put a, a strong cardboard here, I would want to put my closure on this side and on this side, and then have it come over and close this way, and then another one come up and close on the lid this way. I'm 
kind of reluctant to put anything in here, but again, as I said, this has already been somewhat altered. So uh, to work with this further will not destroy the value of it. In fact, it might even enhance it. I was looking at the inside here. Look at, look at this embossed lion. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? I tried to do a crayon rubbing of that. I did not like the Crayola that I had. The Crayola I had was not a, a nice one. I might try, could, try to do a rubbing with oil pastel or maybe I've got some Tim Holtz Distress Crayons. Get something nice and smooth and this certainly is embossed enough to do a nice rubbing which could be d done in as a page inside of the journal. I was going to show you the sides of this box here. It's a little bit distressed here, but I can collage that down. That piece is gone, but look at this. Embossing on the sides. How cool is that? And I don't know, it doesn't feel like there was embossing here on the back. I think I would feel it through this contact paper. But there certainly is embossing over here. So this is a nice candidate for an album shadow box. And this would be my answer to the person who left the comment on my last video. And you will see me be working on this project over the next few weeks. So that's what I wanted to show you. I'm just so fortunate, blessed, happy to get this book of poetry, Emerson, these old Bibles. How fun. And how fun it is to find these family genealogies in here. Whoa. Whoa. The Emerson book, I'm just thrilled to get this. I'm just totally thrilled. Not only will it make a fun art journal, it will make some really nice, fun collage fodder. And since the book is on its way to destruction, I do not have any, any reservations about using it. This is the type of thing that mixed media artists thrive on. But don't tell anybody. Shh. I will see you on the next page.